What's up guys, and welcome to Bloodborne! So, I decided to try out something different before setting up and starting another longer, longer playthrough, so... Yeah! Uh... Well, as you can see, it's Bloodborne! <laughs> Uh, the actually main reason why I decided to record this is to try out the recording with the uh, PS4 Remote Play app thingy that you can download on your computer. So yeah, I am sitting at my PC and streaming the game from my PS4 to my PC where I'm well now playing it and doing the recording at my PC. So yeah, uh, you might already tell that it's slightly blurrier than, you know, just playing the game itself on your TV or something, so... Yeah, I wanna see just how bad it is in actual completed, edited and uploaded video, so can you even make out anything in that? So, yeah, I didn't really actually plan ahead what I want to do in the game, so I'll just go ahead and create a new character, I guess. I'll have to delete one of my old ones, though. Because, yeah, you can only have up to 10 profiles, but I'll just delete one and get to the beginning cutscenes. Oh, yeah. Well, you've come to the right place. Yarnum is the home of blood ministration. You need only unravel its mystery. But where's an outsider like yourself to begin? Easy, with a bit of Yarnum blood of your own. But first, you'll need a contract. A contract we need. So I'll probably end up skipping some cutscenes, but I want to let at least something run so that I get a bit of a picture just how bad it looks. Because yeah, uh, while playing this myself and looking at the screen, seeing the streamed game coming from the PS4 to my PC, I kind of... how should I put this? It kind of feels like I'm playing a YouTube video. It's slightly blurrier. You know, all the text and whatnot. But, you know, still completely playable, I think. But anyway, let's uh, create a character I don't have. I have no idea what I'm doing. Actually, I could go something slightly strength-based. Yeah, sure, military veteran is fine. Ah, of course. Uh... Because I'm playing on my PC, I can just enter the text. Okay. Well, this is cool. Okay, so if I'm streaming to my PC, I can actually use my keyboard to type down names. That's actually fucking excellent if I ever want to do, like, chalice dungeons or anything. Okay, uh, this will be just a... blood test, because this is kind of a test run, so let's not spend too much time with that. Uh, what do I have in my favorites? A couple of random characters. Old drunk looking guy. Yeah, this guy is fashionable enough. I'll just pick that guy and let's get on with it. So I'll probably do like a normal episode length video of this and I'll just play the game normally. See where I end up at. I kind of uh, one play through one character that I've been meaning to make for my own fun is uh, an amygdala arm using character and um, perhaps with the Gatling gun firearm. So maybe I could make this character him if I ever do end up continuing this. Sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. I guess I'll just skip Whatever. this. So yeah, this is how the actual game looks. 
had it kind of... I, I did a slight test, I mean, didn't record it, but... Did play around with the remote play thingy earlier. I tried it out and I... Yeah, it's perfectly playable, but as I said, it kind of feels like you're playing a YouTube video. And kind of... There, there is a very, very slight lag in all of your inputs, so... Your character feels ever so slightly sticky, glued to the ground or something like that. But still, it's not really bad. I did some parrying at the Thumerian Elder at one of the Chalice, chalice Dungeons and it went fine, so meh, it can't be too bad. But it does seem to skip some frames, but... Oh well. I suppose the frame rate of the game isn't perfect on playing on the PlayStation 4 either. And of course I need to keep saying that, that yes, yes, of course I am playing this on PlayStation 4, but I'm streaming from PlayStation 4 to my PC where I'm actually recording this, if that makes any sense. Of course, another recording option would be to use the uh, PS4's own, you know, video sharing thingy to record with that I have used for my uh, Blood Level 4 boss fights and gun only run boss fights and whatnot. That would be an option because, yeah, you can, like, set it so that it records and it ends when you want it to end. Instead of what it, you what you might think that it's just uh, records the last 15 minutes or whatever you have set it to record, but somehow it's it gives me peace of mind so that I can just look at the screen and see that the recording is still on, as opposed to you know just trusting that it does record after I have set it to recording. <laughs> And of course it does say that, you know, recording is on and stuff like that, but never mind my ramblings, I'm just rambling something here while running away from these enemies. But yeah, the frame skipping... Well, it could be worse, but it could be more pleasant to look at. I think I read somewhere that uh, with the PlayStation 4 Pro, you can stream at 1080p and maybe a better frame rate too, but the original PlayStation 4 is limited to, I think, 720. And of course your personal, personal network does affect the quality too, understandably. But I'll just keep moving. Uh, I will go the normal intended path, but just as a side comment, it took me way, way too long to realize that you can actually, yeah, drop down from here and get like a really, really big shortcut. But I'll just do a little run through here. Getting the torch, which is pretty useful for some of the darker areas in the game. Uh, there is a part of me that would like to go into like some deep and long analysis of Blackboard and comparing it to the Dark Souls games that I do play a lot on this channel too, but uh, I don't really consider myself a analysis reviewer or personality, so I'm not sure if I could really do the game any justice and the information that I'd give out probably wouldn't be anything. Anything too interesting, so... Eh, I'll just stick to my playing and rambling while doing so. But let's grab the Bloodstone Shard from here. And I guess it would be smart for me to try to open the shortcut to the... Lamp right away. Those two werewolves there can kinda fuck you up if you're not careful. And almost to the lamp. That I do gotta say that the central Yarnum is probably my 
favourite. First area of Soulsborne games. Because it's kind of... Hmm. I'm not sure if this is the best way to put it, but I like how it kind of loops around itself in many different ways. And you can end up in many different areas and uh, you can completely skip skip some areas while just casually going through it if you don't want to go, go through them and yeah. Just overall good stuff in my opinion. So that we, uh, we could uh, activate the doll at the Hunter's Stream for uh, level ups and all that goodness I gotta get the... I gotta get a single inner sight, so... And yeah, I probably will have my face come at the upper right corner again, so yeah, there's my blood echoes and the inner sight once again. Not sure why I said once again, you haven't seen them before in this playthrough. If you, ha if you are familiar with Bloodborne, then you do know that they are there. That was probably my point. Ah... Uh, I should probably die or something, go to the Hunter stream to get a weapon. But I'll just stick it out as long as I can. But yeah, I need like one... One insight for the Hedol to come alive in the dream. So that I can level up via her. Well, let's see if my fists are long enough. They are. Dropping down that, and I think there was a yeah, another corpse here. One of them is Saw Spear, and one of them is, I think, Upgrade Materials, but I never remember which one is which. Well, actually, yeah, I suppose I don't have to. Oh. A hunter, are you? And an outsider. What a mess you've been caught up in. And tonight of all nights, here, to welcome the new hunter. Thank you, Aileen the Crow. Cr crow. Prepare yourself. For the worst, there are no humans left. They're all flesh-hungry beasts now. But yeah, I, I was thinking that uh, I don't necessarily have to die and get to the hunter stream if I just pick up the. Still lingering Did about. He? What's wrong? A hunter unnerved by a few beasts. <laughs> no matter. Without fear in our hearts, we're little different from the beasts themselves. Thank you for Shake Off Cape Gister. I can get the sauce beer, was my point. <laughs> what are you still? Enough trembling in your boots. A hunter must hunt. I just wanted to hear the, uh, ho the hunter must hunt dialogue. I have a feeling the saw spear is the one that lands on this side, so let's check it out. That it is. Good, good. And of course, another big difference compared to Souls games is the rally mechanic that you can. Restore some of your health if you attack enemies right after they hit you, which I think is pretty nice. And yeah, on the top of the saw spear, a lot of people do say that it's one of, if not the best weapon in the game, and it's kind of interesting how you get it so early. But you know, it's the weapons in platform. Yeah, they are kind of low in number, but they are all very, very unique from each other. Well. Ironically, except for the Saw Spear and the Saw Cleaver, which is one of the starting weapons, those two are probably the two closest to each other. But overall, yeah, the weapons are very, very different. They, they act very differently. And have their strengths and weaknesses, and... Well, overall, I'd say that you can make anything work. Any weapon whatsoever. I mean, sure, you could argue the same in Souls games too, but, like, what? Uh, if there's, like, five straight swords that have com completely unique movesets and they no nothing 
at all different differentiates them from one another than their stats and looks. Then yeah, you can kinda tell that of course the best one is the one with the best stats. But with Bloodborne you can't because there aren't any two weapons that are exactly alike. Once again I could have said that way, way more condensedly, but you get to the point. Let's get more upgrade materials from the there. Ah, uh, hmm. If I, could, if I would go down and straight from there, I could uh, get to the shortcut opened. Another shortcut closer to the lamp and a good shortcut for the Gascoin. Gascoin. I really have no idea how, how to pronounce his name. That boss fight. You could get a really good shortcut for him. But I will do a little detour from here because you can actually meet Gasquan's daughter. Technically not like see her, but you can talk to her through a window. Alright, and I don't have a gun yet, so I can parry this guy, but I might be able to... If I do like a charge heavy charge heavy attack, you can backstab enemies. But you can't backstab them like you can in Souls game just by walking behind them and attacking. So actually that's another thing that really sets some weapons apart from each other that yeah, some of them have like really quick this charged heavy attack charge R2 with the white little sparkle. Some of them take very long to charge and some of them are really fast. See, are you? I don't know your voice, but I know that smell. Are you a hunter? I mean, did you just really look for my mum? Daddy never came back from the hunt and she went to find him, but now she's gone too. I'm all alone and scared. Of course I'll find the girl's mother. Oh, thank you. My mum wears a red jeweled brooch. It's so big and, and beautiful. You won't miss it. Oh, I mustn't forget. If you find my mum, give her this music box. How do we get the time? Some daddy's favourite songs. And when daddy forgets us, we play it for him so he remembers. Mum's so silly when I'm off without it. And yeah, she kinda gives you the hint that you can use the music box in the fight against Gasquan. I'll just call him Gasquan for now. And I suppose once you enter the boss fight, it's not like right away clear that Gasquan is the daddy she mentioned, but uh, you can find the brooch she mentioned in the fight arena on a corpse. And yeah, if you use a tiny music box, the boss staggers and you get a couple of hits in. Those corpses are actually enemies, so I'll steer clear of them for now. Well, less, more, less like for now and more like forever. Because I don't think they really give you a lot of blood echoes anyway, so eh, don't really gain too much by killing them. Well, there would be a giant pig further down the sewer, but I have no need to go there right now. Though you can get the Saw Hunter batch from there, with which you unlock stuff from the messenger store. Namely the uh, three starting weapons. But I could actually try to make my way to the dream now. But I'll just use one of those, uh, one of those madman's knowledge that I found earlier. Oh, one of these guys noticed me. Are you coming all the way here? Yes, you are. I guess I'll just kill you. I don't have a gun yet, so I can't parry him. So. Ah, this will be kinda of slow going. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's definitely less smooth. Especially when you dodge. Like many times. Many times in a row. You know, this streaming, playing thing. But it's very much doable. But let's make our way to the dream. And yeah, since. Uh, I need that one. One inside I got from using the madman's knowledge to get the doll to wake up as I mentioned so that I can level up. So let's return to the hunter's dream and you would also get sent there if you would have died. And oh right, Bloodborne's loading times are not the shortest. The Hunter's Dream. And she's actually not awake just yet. It might require... ...a second visit. <laughs> Never mind. But yeah, uh, even if, uh, if I would have died, yeah, I would have just gotten a weapon here. For free, I... well... I guess I'll just grab the axe if I'm going kind of strength. Strength using any way, but uh, well, I'm not sure what its strength scaling will be, but it starts at a D, which is not the, that great. And you get a firearm too, I'll just get the pistol since it's more faster and it's easier to react to enemy attacks with it than with the blunderbuss. You gotta have to be earlier and shoot in advance, at least that's how it feels to me. And a notebook, so like the orange soapstone from Souls games. Aha! You must be the new hunter. Welcome to the hunter's dream. This will be your home. For now, I am... Gehrman. Friend to you, hunters. You're sure to be in a fine haze about now, but... Don't think too hard about all of this. Just go out and kill a few beasts. It's for your own good. You know, it's just what hunters do. You'll get used to it. So let's do just as he told me to do. And let's upgrade the weapon slightly. And all right, you need a uh, uh, three shards for level uh, plus one I think then you need another five for plus two and then another eight for plus three and after that you start needing twin bloodstone shards hmm well I was thinking I'll probably buy the Kirk hammer once I kill the cleric beast so... Ah, crap. I guess I can try. Try without upgrading once, at least. Once? This was once a workshop. Where oh, just do some skipping. Yeah, yeah, I can use even the doll, should it please me. I'm not actually sure why I explained some of the gameplay elements. Because, yeah, I assume most people watching this are familiar with the game anyway, so... I must, I might be just wasting everyone's time. <laughs> but I'll still keep doing it, possibly. <laughs> Central Yarnum was the lamp where I warped here from, and yeah, uh, there's basically just that one merchant. And the inside shop too. And I guess there's stores in Chalice Dungeons too, but whatever. Point was, with the Batches you find more stuff comes to, you know, comes on sale at that one store there. But I could just go try out the Cleric Beast right away, as I mentioned. I'm not sure how it'll go. 
I'm really, really rusty at the game, let's just put it that way. Ah, uh, actually I suppose it might be smart. What? Uh, smart for me to visit the dream again, actually. And use my blood echoes. Yeah, I'll just check out if the doll has come alive. And awake she is. Hello, good hunter. I am a doll. Here in this dream to look after you, honorable hunter. Pursue the echoes of blood, and I will channel them into your strength. You will hunt beasts. And I will be here for you to embolden your sickly spirit. Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. Let me stand close. Now shut your eyes. And I think I'll actually go with vitality. I think vitality is kind of important in early, well. early Bloodborne because everything just hits you and you can just get more damage by it. Ah. You can, you know, boost your damage nicely by upgrading your weapon, so... I don't Welcome. think leveling up your... Very well. Dam like, you know, strength and skill is all that important at this point. Or blood into your arcane and they really start to shine only after you invest a lot in them anyway. Let's put it all to vitality for now. And from here we also get the beckoning bell and the silencing blank. So basically, yeah, you can try to initiate some co-op with the bell. And I think invading in this game only works like uh, if you ring the bell, then or an invader can also invade your world or something like that. Or maybe you... I assume so, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't actually have to have a co-op buddy to be... to get invaded. I think you... If you uh, ring the bell, you can get invaded, yeah. Except for a couple of uh, areas, so there's this bell ringing maiden. Who, well... Enables people to invade you until you kill her. And she doesn't respawn, I'm pretty fucking sure. And yeah, speaking of the doll and the leveling up, yeah, I overall am not a huge fan of the uh, level up lady system that all of the games have other than Dark Souls 1. I mean, I guess I understand, you know, from wanting to make important characters out of the level up girls, but uh, it's just kind of a hassle, and especially in Bloodborne, if you farm for a soul somewhere, it kinda gets old, because you can't just rest at the land like you can at the bonfire in a souls game to, you know, have the enemies re in the area respawn. You have to warp out or die and, like, warp back. Well, actually, I should put that, put that better on another time. Uh, oh, uh, Holy hell, I cannot speak while I'm trying to hit this guy. Yeah, you can either use the lamp and warp to the hunter stream and then warp back there. Where you warp from and the enemies have have respawned then. Or you can just let on a single enemy to, uh, kill you and you'll respawn at the area you were in, you know, as usual. And the enemies are back there. But then, of course, you do lose your... I mean, you, you have, have the risk of losing your Echoes. Or I think you can use the Bolt Hunter's Mark. Kind of like the Homeward Bone. I think that also... What? Also responds to the enemies in the area, but it just doesn't feel nice to have to use an item to have enemies respawn. But I guess I'm just being a bit nitpicky about it. Also, I, I did not 
equipped with a pistol and I probably do want to because I think it's pretty easy to actually shoot the cleric beast's face. And he will stagger and you get a visceral attack on him. There we go and... I just love how visceral attacks look and feel in Bloodborne. Well, I do not want to get hit by that. Also, I really enjoy some of the mechanics in Bloodborne. For example, the serrated weapons and the other kind of weapon that I can't remember right now. I think I've heard a word like righteous bonus or something like that. That kinda does better damage to go ghosts and unholy beings. <laughs> Maybe that's not the best way to put it, but I hope you understand. But yeah, this weapon being called the Saw Spear, you can kind of maybe imagine that it has the serrated bonus. I think uh, the Saw Spear, yeah, has the serrated bonus in both of its forms. So this normal one and the spear form too. Unlike, I think, the Saw... Uh, saw Cleaver, I think, only has it in, like, this... I'm not sure if you should call it an axe form, sword form. Well, it's not really a sword, I think it's more like an axe. Well, it's a sword. Let's, let's just go with that. And I think uh, serrated weapons did like 20% extra damage to beast enemies. Cleric beast, unsurprisingly, is a beast enemy. And out of the other other starting weapons, uh, I think the Hunter Axe that I picked, it doesn't actually do in either of its forms. It doesn't have either of the, 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 the bonuses. But I think it has the best just raw damage, so I guess it's mm, kind of the most damaging overall. You don't have to really think what you're fighting if you're using it. And the Threaded Cane, I think, in its sword mode, it has that Righteous bonus, whatever, and in its whip form, it has the Serration bonus, so it's kinda nice. It's the lowest base damage, but I think it has pretty decent skill scaling once you, le once you upgrade it far enough. But anyway, now that I got the... Something badge... I can buy the Kirk Hammer from here, which I do want. Oh, I actually need 16. Okay, well shit, I should have put a couple of points in strength there. And I could buy the Hunter Chief Emblem if I had enough Echo, so I could kind of get a shortcut later on. But it's not really necessary. And yeah, that was all the consumable echoes, cold bloods that I had. And the old hunter bell can be used to summon a couple of NPC summons, I think. But anyway, yeah, the cleric beast actually isn't even... isn't even on... Uh, ah, isn't even a mandatory boss at all, it's completely optional. Sure, as I said, you can get the hunter chief emblem and kinda get a shortcut from that, but not necessary. There is another path too. But let's do a little sweep from around the areas where I didn't really go yet. Here at Central Yarnum. I could also go talk to a couple of NPCs. There's the Iosefka's clinic thing where she wants me to bring patients to her, but eh, it's kinda a waste of time since I'm not really planning on being very thorough anyway on this PlayStation. Whoop, I didn't remember you can actually get behind there. Shit. Okay, well done. 
Also a system in Blackboard, which I don't, off the top of my head, don't remember being in any Souls game. Uh, if you get killed by an enemy, your echoes can kinda get infused to the enemy that killed you, or another enemy close by to where you died, and to get them back you have to kill that enemy, so... There are situations where that can make getting your echoes back kinda difficult. But it doesn't seem like either one of those have it. Have on my echoes because their eyes would glow. So I assume my echoes are somewhere around here. There they are. Now let's just not get killed again. I think there's another bloodstone shard up yet here. And down we whoop. A bit too much, down we go. And I guess I'm safe from the beasts now. And of course, yeah, you can get those. Now uh, you can trade some of your health to get five more bullets. Which is nice. Not sure what else to say about that. <laughs> Especially with a couple of runes, which I guess you could compare to rings in Dark Souls. Uh, especially with a couple of runes where you can kind of get more HP back from visceral attacks or straight up bullets back from visceral attacks, so you don't necessarily lose anything at all by parrying enemies. I'll just spam bullets at that guy, there we go. And I guess I should check out what the other guy dropped to. Could be upgrade materials, and those are always good. And upgrade materials it was, and there's still one more item above. The blood vials are a system that I have read a lot of criticism about, and uh, yeah, there have been. Um, on my first couple of playthroughs, yeah, it did kinda annoy me that I had to farm for blood vials every now and then, but honestly, if you don't just spend... Whoop, <laughs> whoop. Uh, if you don't spend all of your echoes on just level ups and, you know, buying something from the store and making sure you never have any extra, then... Yeah, if you if you just don't blindly spend all your, all your echoes, I think it's very much doable to just level up and use, if not all, then most of the remaining echoes on blood vials and you really rarely run out of them. Of course there are exceptions with challenge runs and all where I did kind of have to farm for echoes to buy blood, blood, uh, buy blood vials with, but also when you unlock lower, lower depth chalice dungeons, you kind of start to get so many blood echoes you don't really even care about anything costing anything anymore. But let's get my echoes back still and drop it down where I was. Gonna drop earlier. Whoop, did not mean to fall straight down. And yeah, you have my echoes then. I guess the rat fell down, works for me. And then just dropping down, trying to stay alive. I think it's a death if you just drop straight down. But this time, uh, well, I suppose it's kinda 
I'm kind of risking my echoes here, but I could go check out the piggy that I mentioned earlier. If I'll even make it to that far before <laughs> this guy kills me. And I do want to get behind him as soon as possible. Well, that works well enough. Because if I would have just stayed stayed in the tunnel, then he would have charged at me, and that is kind of not so great for me. Let's see if I could... Ah, okay. Well, he went down, that's what matters. And here's the Saw Hunter patch that I think I mentioned. And just straight ahead is a death trap. I think there is actually even <laughs> time for treasures. But yeah, be beware of fall. Only death there. Once again, I could just go straight to Gasquan. Or I could go try to get a couple of those strength levels to use the Kirk Hammer that I bought. Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to try to kill a Gasp one first either. And though he's not the easiest first boss in the games. I mean, sure, I did kill Cleric Beast first, but how should I say it? Uh, first mandatory boss, because Kaskwan you do have to kill. But I guess I can just cheese him with... with, with the... music box that I got earlier. And if I could get couple more wiles from you guys, then that again would make my life a bit easier. And yeah, I also really like with visceral attacks after parrying that, yeah, like you saw there, I did get hit, but I still managed to get the parry, and when I got the visceral attack, I was still in the mm, rally mechanic range, so my HP didn't actually go... Uh, the regeneration part of the HP didn't go down yet, so I could actually regain most of what I lost there. But anyway, yeah, I have that there. I'll just put those away. Uh, did I get any oil urns? I did not, actually. Shit. I guess I could use punch and blood cocktails in these two, but I guess molotovs are good enough. Okay, tiny music box and Molotov cocktails. And I'll just get my max. Max extra bullets and heal myself, so. the blood it seems to him. Alright, I probably should have equipped the better armor set. Ah well, I guess it'll be fine. If you would trick your axe, then I could be sure that you won't shoot at me immediately, so... It's safer for me to try to parry you. 
but this actually seems to work out surprisingly well. What's that smell? The sweet blood. Oh, it seems to me it's enough to make a man sick. <laughs> I guess you can shoot at me, even with the tricked version of the axe. Okay, I did not remember it. Oh well. Also, this is going to hell. Right after I mentioned that I wanted him to <laughs> trick his weapon. Whoop, I think I hit the gravestone there. But oh well, I'll just spam a bullets at him and it'll work out. Oh wait, shit, I'm... Hmm. At kind of a danger zone here. Oh shit, my luck on. Whoop. Luck on disappeared when I was behind the tree. Excuses, excuses. Holy hell, this has not been going so well. Okay, after a um, decent start, it actually went to hell. <laughs> uh, just to run back, get my echoes, and try again, I guess. And here we are. I actually managed to get a quite a nice, quite a nice number of what uh, blood echoes and. What? No, no, never mind. Not blood echoes. Ah, uh, blood vials from enemies on the way. So. Should be fine those wise too. Also, I remembered that I didn't use the music box even once during the last attempt, so... Yeah, it kinda shows that I haven't really been playing the game a whole lot recently. But oh well, I'll get Kaskwan down in... Well, if not this attempt, then it shouldn't take way that many. And I can always use the excuse that it just feels different to play with the remote play thing. After I hit like that, I can't actually quite capitalize on the parry. I guess I'll get some extra bullets. And of course, I think you are able to kind of cheese Gasquad by. Uh, if you use, for example, the axe that I chose, you can kind of hit him over the, some of the gravestones and stuff. I'm way too early with my parries. I guess I can use the music box too, so yeah, you actually get a pretty nice pretty nice window to open him. What a uh, nice window to... Uh, no, nice opening to hit him during, yes. Ah, words. Escape me. Whoop. I guess more music box cheesing 
Ah, okay. I did have enough time for this. I haven't actually tried that out uh, before, but was thinking that could work maybe. Also, right about now you should be, yeah, changing your form to a beast. And it's kinda annoying how you lose the lock on for a second there. I mean, you have to lock on to him again because he kinda is a different enemy. And the music box still works. And because he's a beast now, he does take some pretty nice fire damage. So Molotov Cocktails are actually really, really good against Casqua's second form. Especially if you throw away oil, an oil urn at him first. And yeah, during the fight I got the red brooch. So yeah, that's the girl's mother. But I won't go to the girl just yet, I can... Uh, after letting her know about her mother, I can make her move to a safe place. I can send her to Yosefka's clinic or the cathedral ward, which I'm about to enter soon. But if you send her to Yosefka's clinic, well, there's the fake Yosefka actually at this point, so... Ah, uh, she'll just get transformed into an alien. So let's not do that to her. Blood gem workshop tool. So yeah, now that if I get blood gems, I can apply them to my weapon. I guess apply is a stupid word, but I can add them to the slots in the weapons that you get by upgrading the weapon. I'll just skip this. And that's a long black screen. You must be a hunter. Very sorry. The incense must have masked your scent. Good, good. I've been waiting for one of your ilk. These hunts have everyone all locked up inside, waiting for it to end. It always does. Always has, you know. Since forever. But it won't end nicely. Not this time. Even some folks hiding inside are going by it. The screams of women folk. The stench of blood. The snarls of beasts, none of them's too uncommon now. Yarnum's done for, tell ya. But if you spot anyone with their wits about them, tell them about this here Erden Chapel. They'll be safe here. The incense wards off the beasts. Spread the word. Tell them to come on over, if you wouldn't mind. I know I shouldn't be asking ya, but if you happen upon someone, if they saw... So yeah, now I can send people here. To safety, and there's also that old lady in Cinderella Yarnum too. But I'll just get back to the Hunter stream. I could uh, get to those strength levels that I need for the Kirk Hammer on the loading screen right now. And I probably still have some extra after that for actually upgrading the hammer too. So I'll probably be using the Kirk Hammer until I get to the DLC after beating Amelia. And then I'll get the Amygdalan arm from there. Very well. Because I don't have to kill a single boss in the DLC to get the arm. Farewell. Farewell, good hunter. And all right, German is here too. The moon is close. If the beasts loom large and threaten to crush your spirits, seek a holy chalice, as every hunter before you has. A holy chalice will reveal the tomb of the gods where hunters partake in communion. Most of the holy chalices lie deep within the tomb of the gods, and the few that found their way to the surface were lost again in the hands of men. But if the old hunter tales remain true, one of the holy chalices is worshipped in the valley hamlet. Yet the town is in disarray. It was burned and abandoned for fear of the scourge. Home now only to beasts, the perfect place for a hunter, wouldn't you say? So German kind of gives you a hint there where you maybe should be headed next. 
I'll just get the clear cannon. Eh, I feel better if my main weapon is in the first slot. Same with the pistol and the torch too. But yeah, let's upgrade the Kirk Hammer. And I have enough shards for two level ups, so six more needed until I, I get plus three. And at plus three, its strength scaling will be okay, it's already B, so okay, that's pretty neat, I guess. Ha, <laughs> I forgot it's this. Of course, in, in its untricked form, while well, it's just this sword, you have this huge lump of rock on your back. And then you get the crushing hammer form. Well, I guess I could still grab Welcome. What is it? a level up. Very well, let Maybe a bit of endurance. Endurance is not nearly as important in Bloodborne as it's in other Soulsborne games. I mean, sure, Bloodborne isn't a Souls game, sure, but well, there's a reason why Very people well. call them Soulsborns, because they are in their core so very, very similar. <laughs> So I think it's normal people kinda do compare them. Alright, I didn't visit the young girl, but there well. Eh, it's not all that important. I'm kind of a meanie right meanie right now, but as I said before, I do not mean for this to be like a really thorough run anyway. Well, as expected, the hammer definitely does stagger the enemies quite nicely. I mean, I have used the hammer on a single character before, for a little while before I got the... Ah, uh, watch its face... The spinning circle saw thingy. God damn it, I can't think of its name right now. I'm sure it'll come to me in just a few minutes. Whoop. Some stone shard from there. Uh, these guys I do like to avoid at this point of the game. And this gate here I would get open if I bought the Hunter Chief Emblem for 10,000. But, eh. I'll just head to Old Yarnum in a bit and beat the Bloodstar. Yeah, Bloodstar Beast. And after killing him, I can get, get another path open to the other side of the gate. I keep thinking of the na uh, name of the weapon as Pizza Cutter, which is its fan favorite name, but Jesus Christ, what, it, what is its actual, actual name? Whirligig, Whir Whirligig Saw. That's it. And that's definitely enough shards for me to get the plus three. And here I think it's a blood gem. Also fun fact, right behind this door would be the... Well, you're in the know, right? Uh, would be the great bridge where you fought the cleric beast. And in some beta build of the game, I mean some well, probably even earlier than that. In some early build of the game, the door was able to be opened. It's kind of taunting how it's there, unable to be opened now, but oh well. Not that big of a deal, I suppose. But anyway, let's head towards Old Yarnum, where the boss Bloodstar Beast is. Though I, yeah, I think I'll be finishing Old Yarnum on this recording. And I mean, I mean, I'm not even sure if I'll ever continue this anyway. Recording this playthrough, I mean. 
but never say never. I want to get to old Yarnum anyway. Oh no, oh no, oh no, this is way too many dogs. Ah! Also, I'm still not, uh, I still didn't equip the Yarnum Hunter set that I got. Actually, I think it's just, ah, it's just uh, the Hunter set. Yarnum Hunter set might be the one you get, can buy. Mm, Hunter's Dream. Hunter Hat, Hunter Garb. Hunter Gloves and Hunter Trousers. To get that iconic Bloodborne look. But actually, since I'm right next to the set, I guess I could get the top hat from here. And the version of the garb that doesn't have the second smaller cape thing. Uh, there we go. Way fancier now. But anyway, yeah, those dogs, I don't even remember when that has happened to me last time. Usually I just run past here and it's all fine and dandy. And the dog has my, uh, not my souls, but my echoes. I probably have called them souls earlier in this recording too, but oh well. I'll just do a bit of a bone. Really not familiar with the weapon, but oh well. And let's meet Alfred here too. You're a beast hunter, aren't you? I knew it. That's precisely how I started out. Oh, beg pardon. You may call me Alfred. Protégé of Master Ligarius. Hunter of vile bloods. So, what say you? Our prey might differ, but we are hunters, the both of us. Why not cooperate and discuss the things we've learned? Sure. Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Take this to celebrate our acquaintance. Thank you for fire paper and praise. Beast yes, hunting sir. is a sacred practice. May the good blood guide your way. Thank you. And now I can summon Alfred for the Bloodstart Beast boss fight that I mentioned earlier, too. And uh, he has his own little quest line, too. Getting him to Castle Canehurst, and bam, he kinda goes crazy. I mean, I guess that applies to a lot of NPCs in the game. Craziness is kind of a good large theme in the game. Whoa, that was a quick turn. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned about the rally mechanic that different weapons have different rally values, but I don't think you can actually see those values anywhere in the game, which is kinda, eh, not that nice. But I think the, 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 the Hunter Axe that I picked as the starting weapon from the Hunter's Dream, I think that one has the uh, highest rally value in the whole game in its strict form. But I might be mistaken, and the values do get better when you upgrade the weapons, but... But, but, uh, I'm not sure if it was at, as it, at its base level or when it's fully upgraded, but I think at, at some point it is the best rally weapon in the game, meaning that you heal the most health with a single attack from it. You there! You there! Hunter! Hunter! Didn't you see the warning? Turn back at once. Old Yarnum, burned and abandoned by men, is now home only to beasts. They are of no harm to those of us. Turn back, for the hunter will face the hunt. It's, it wasn't the statue in the sky that was talking, but I always like to pretend it is. 
Because, yeah, all of the Arnhem is kinda a messed up place. I mean, not all that much really, but uh, there's that statue floating there. I think I remember seeing some clip about something weird being somewhere up there too. And on my very, very first playthrough, I, playthrough, I actually got sucked into a wall pretty close to here. So yeah, old Yarnum has never really... Uh, hasn't really stuck in my mind as the most polished of areas. And I also remember finding it kind of difficult too on my first playthrough, but uh, I guess it's probably just because of the poison. The stressful poison and the fast long combos of the enemies here. But I suppose this ah, I suppose it is quite a beast to like to flail around for a while. And I think it was exactly this little hole here that I got kinda sucked in. I'm not sure if I like jumped or something, but yeah, I just went inside the wall and couldn't get out. I'm not sure if I had any of those bold hunters marks either, so I might have had to use the... Uh, what's the item called again? Just the hunter's mark. So yeah, sacrifice all blood echoes and awaken a new... So yeah, okay, bold hunter's mark and that's just the hunter's mark. Okay. But I'll just do a bit of running. Well, I suppose I have time to attempt Bloodstar Beast like once if I just run there and ignore everything else. Which I maybe could even do. So yeah, it was actually Diuna from uh, top of uh, that tower there. I think you can actually even make him out. Just barely him and his machine gun. And once I get a bit of bit closer, he'll start shooting at me with said machine gun. You Sadly, are a skilled hunter, adept, and merciless, which is why I must stop. Sadly, coming from this side, you can't avoid him getting mad at you, but later on in the game, once you unlock another path to here... That's a weird sound, not sure where that's coming from. Kind of a low moaning. Anyway, yeah, later on you do find another path to old Yarnum and you can kinda of sneak behind him and you can talk to him. And you can agree that these beasts are allowed to live here. And yeah, he will give you a Chester and I think his badge. Though I think you do have to kill him to be able to buy his set. I'll just climb up quick. I said I'll ignore everything else but I'll just get the shortcut opened. And I probably should try to get the second shortcut open too. I'll just be running past you if you allow it. And off we go. And sure, I am leaving behind a whole lot of items, but oh well, I'll just get them later if I feel like it. Right now, I just wanna charge at the boss fight. And here's a weird encounter how, yeah, uh, the <laughs> werewolf is kinda coming through the door even before it breaks. But I guess it's kinda neat picky to complain about something like that. Well, I'm not really complaining, it's just something something pointed out. Well then let's get back. Hopefully the doorway is passable and now with the three werewolves. Yeah. No. 
I thought I could pass here just fine. Also, I wanted to mention the dedicated healing button that Bloodborne has that it, it every single fucking time when I uh, go from Bloodborne to Souls games or vice versa. I always get them mixed up. So yeah, if I try to two-hand in Bloodborne, I end up just healing. And yeah, if I want to heal in Dark Souls, even if I have Estus as my quick item, I just, you know, two-hand my weapon instead. <laughs> but oh well. I'll just ignore that thing too, and Alfred should be here. Alright, there isn't even a confirmation whether I actually do want to summon him or not. Old Hunter Bell resonates with another. So I guess the Old Hunter Bell wasn't just for DLCs, summon NPCs, I mean the ones that were added with the DLC. Ah, huh. never mind me then. Anyway, Bloodstar Beast, and uh, did I get a single antidote? Because if I didn't, then this... Okay, yeah, I did not. Might get interesting. I'll just get some fire paper and pungent blood cocktails ready to... There, is, there are some antidotes behind the altar. Behind Bloodstar Beast. But yeah, his poison can kinda of fuck you up. If you're not prepared... There we go, I might be able to get them to my quick items too. Might be... Wait... Oh! Ah! <laughs> they were so high above I didn't even notice them. What? Almost missed his... I mean, just barely missed his ass. Well, there we go. Once again, since he's a beast, Molotov cocktails work pretty nicely. Whoop, that's an attack I do not do not want to get hit by. So yeah. As the horns in Dragon's Dogma have wisely said, tis weak to fire. Alfred isn't doing so hot. And neither am I with my accuracy. <laughs> God damn it. Let's start this was a boss that gave me real trouble on my first playthrough. I mean, sure, I never really summon NPCs on my or other players on my first playthroughs anyway, but oh shit! Oh, oh! Okay, I'm not actually sure if I was alive there for a second. If I was, then God fucking damn it, me! <laughs> But yeah, the Bloodstar Beast was a difficult boss fight for me in the in my first playthrough. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess this is enough for now. Kind of a shame to leave Bloodstar Beast alive. But hey, yeah, as I said, this was mainly just a little something I wanted to try out of the remote play thingy. Uh, just to see how playable this actually is and just how watchable the end product will be if I record on my PC after streaming from my PlayStation. So, yeah. If you thought that this could still work, 
despite being a bit blurry and a bit uh, low frame rate at times, then yeah, definitely do let me know. And if there's any particular kind of Bloodborne run you'd like to see me do with commentary, then of course, suggestions are welcome. I have done those gun only and blood level 4 runs. I mean, not at the same time, but you know, two different playthroughs uh, that I did just upload just the boss fights from. But technically, those, both of those are at the beginning of New Game Plus, so I could try <laughs> New Game Plus blood level 4. Ah, though I am not looking forward to that if I do end up doing that ever, even without recording. And the gun only run, well, technically, I could change it to a Simon's Bow Blade. Bow mode, new game plus, uh, bow, bow only, new game plus run two, or just start a new character and you know just use whatever until I get Simon's bow played and from there on, then on, uh, use just the bow to do almost a bow only run or anything really, if there's. Any Bloodborne content you'd like to see, then just let me know. If not, hey, that's cool too. I'll probably will. I I will probably keep. Will keep playing Dark Souls games as in the past. So, I will probably never run out of runs and playthroughs in some of these games that I will do. But hey. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys sometime, maybe. Bye!